In this lesson, we're going to see how to use semantic tags. Semantic tags are new elements introduced in HTML5 to allow you to define the structure of your document in a more meaningful way than you might have done previously. I have a simple example here to get us going, which shows some of the simple semantic tags in HTML5. There's a tag called header, which allows you to define the header area of your document. There's an element called nav, which represents the navigational area. That's where you might display your hyperlinks. There's an element called section. And the idea here is that you can use sections to partition your document into the main content areas that you want to display. I'll come back to that point in a moment. There's an element called a side, which is like a sidebar in a book. So you might use that to display adverts, for example, on the right hand side of your web page. And there's an element called footer, which says, as you might expect, to display a footer at the bottom of your document or part of your document. So these semantic tags, they don't do anything as such, but they're better than just having a whole series of divs in your document because they have more meaning to the reader. If I open this document in the browser, I have Google Chrome here, you can see that it, there's no intrinsic meaning to the elements in terms of styling, but we can apply style sheets and we'll do that at the end of this example. Remember all of these examples are available in your project files folder. So feel free to have a play if you want to. Go back into the editor and go a bit further with the semantic tags. You typically nest elements together to build up a composite structure in your document. So here I've defined a section and inside the section, I've partitioned my section into a series of articles. So you can think of an article as being like a paragraph and you can think of a section as being like a chapter, different ways of breaking your content down into smaller chunks. And you can nest headers and footers inside articles like I've done here, as well as traditional elements such as P for paragraph. And then here I have another article with some headers and footers. I haven't put any content in here, but you can imagine how that would appear. But let me just show you what that looks like in the browser. Again, there's no particular content there, but the structure is in place in the underlying document. Back into the editor, you can combine semantic tags with traditional tags. Here I have a header that contains a header one and a header two and a header four. Uh, here I have an article which contains an unordered list, itemizing some of the cool new features in HTML5. And then here in my aside, I've combined together some headings and a paragraph and so on. And in my navigation area, I've put together a series of hyperlinks. So let's have a look at a real example. This is my document. And in my document, I've defined a header and I have a main content area. Most of my document is in this, my main container. And in that container, I've got the navigational zone as discussed previously. I'll scroll down a little bit and you can see I have a large section here starting on line 25. So this section is the main content in the body of the document, if you like, if I expand that again, and you can see that I've broken my section down into a series of articles. I have two articles in my section. In the first article, each article can have a header if you want to, plus some content using traditional HTML. Another element I haven't talked about yet is figure. Figure is like a container of images, and you can also define a fig caption, which sits alongside or below the images that you've grouped together. So you'll see what that looks like in a moment. And then at the end of my article, I have a footer. So that's the first article. Now let's have a look at the second article. So this article has a header as well, and an unordered list with some nice features in HTML5, just to display them on the web page. And just to finish off the example, I have an aside here that displays some additional information that might be useful for the user. So as a developer reading this document, you have a fairly good idea what the meaning of this element is. It's for hyperlinks. And it's much better than just having 100,000 divs in your document with no intrinsic meaning. If I open that document in the browser, at the moment, I haven't got any style sheet linked to the document. And that's how it should be. You're not really meant to worry too much about styling when you write in the HTML. That's what style sheets are for. So although my document has some structure internally, when the user views it, obviously the experience is a little bit disappointing. I don't really think my users would be very happy if I gave them a website like that. 
But let me show you the same example using the style sheet. This is exactly the same document, but with a style sheet attached. I've defined rules for hyperlinks. I've set up styles for the section and for the articles. I set up a style for the aside so that it appears on the right hand side there. And I've set up styles for headers that appear inside articles and footers that appear inside articles and then general headers. So let's have a look at that style sheet. Well, first of all, if I pop back into Komodo Edit, just to emphasize this document here is exactly the same as the one before, except that it links in the style sheet. And the style sheet is here. So the style sheet defines some basic rules that apply to the whole body. And then images have a certain size. There were two images on the document. And then I have a rule here on line 17 that targets the main content area. That's the div that represents most of the document. And that's a sort of light blue background color. And then if I just go down a little further, depending on how comfortable you are with CSS, this is a general set of rules that will apply for all my header semantic tags. If I have any H2s inside a header, then they'll appear with a zero margin. If I have any H1s generally, they appear like that, H2s and H3s. Again, these files are in the project folder in the download, so feel free to edit this. That's actually quite a good way of getting comfortable with CSS, is to just have a play, take an existing document that works, try to make some changes, see what happens. Okay, so the footer looks like that, and H2s in the footer look like so. So you can see, by making use of semantic tags in HTML, it makes my style sheet more straightforward because now I can make use of the nav element in my CSS rule. So navigation elements will be displayed in a block, so they'll occupy one line each with a 25% width, and they will be left aligned in their region. So if I go back into the browser, these are my hyperlinks, and they appear, each one is a separate line and have a certain width and they're anchored on the left-hand side using float left. And then I have a series of rules that differentiate between different modes for the hyperlink. So hyperlinks that I haven't visited appear like that. Hyperlinks appear like this when I hover over them. Any H3s that might appear inside the navigational area appear like that. So I have an H3 here, yellow, centralized. So there we go. That's how it all hands together. I have a series of rules here that specify how each individual semantic tag should be styled. So you should make use of these semantic tags in your document. Use section to represent one of the main content areas in your document. Decompose sections into articles. Inside articles, if you want to, you can have headers and footers. And then you can have a side to represent additional logic. So for this aside here, for example, the aside displays itself as a block, 25% float left. So have a play with these examples and see what you can do. And good luck.